Hey guys, it's Loman, and today I am presenting my Sephira team in MD2, the latest and greatest endgame dungeon. So, you know, Sephira is the latest Gothis exclusive, and it's basically an overkill clone of Mahito, right? So Mahito was released during the JJK collab, and really, really popular as a pair with Yuji, and instantly became a great leader pair. Right, maybe not like the elite of the meta, right? Of course, Nautilus, Royal Oak, Seawolf still reigned, but Yuji Mahito definitely left its mark as one of the better teams that we had during that time, right? Like I played it for my fairy title, and I I have to say it it's pretty good. <laughs> so very flexible, very strong, and so Sephira is just the light version. You know, Gung Ho realized, oh my God, Maito is such a money maker and so popular, and you know, if we made a light version, won't people rush to buy it? So they did, and well, here I am, because I went and rushed to buy it. I went in to buy it, and they got me. So. Here's Sephira, right? Lots of VDPs, the same dual attribute converter where you convert fire and water to light, which means that effectively half the board is light, right? Barring locks, but if half the board is light, well, you're going to be generating a lot of orbs, which makes the VDPs very consistent. Something that's a little different from Mahito though is that Sephira is much more VDP focused. Mahito had Rose, and because the VDPs were a little gimpy, what ended up happening was Yuji Mahito team just played Row 7C style. But here with Safira, it's very, very heavily focused on VDP. Like, I'm boxing every turn, and if I'm not, it's because I really don't have enough orbs, or I just don't want to do damage, right? It's very VDP oriented. And, you know, you might think that VDP is an amazing awakening and why people haven't done this with Mahito. It's because VDP, the way the damage math works, isn't really really that ideal it's honestly not that great if anything it's like you want to try and avoid vdp as much as possible because remember vdp only benefits the combo if you match a box that that combo only gets the damage multiplier right so it's really inefficient when you're matching more than that right like 7c the, the great thing about 7c and 10c is that it boosts all damage right like if you match three light combos all three light combos get that universal 2x right but with vdp it's like you match a box and three combos well only that box gets the multiplier and all the other combos are just added and you know multiplying is scales much better than adding so yeah that, that's why vdp wasn't the hottest but with Sephira, you have the spike that effectively serves as kind of your 7C supplement, the universal multiplier supplement right there. So it works out in the end. The cards all do massive damage and yeah, ended up clearing MD2. So let's talk about the team and why I used what I used. First up, I'm sure you noticed the double Mario. So Mario got huge buffs. I think in terms of the orchestra rerun, she probably got the biggest buffs of the entire machine. Her cooldown was reduced and she got a shield component. You know. What's funny about Mario is when she was released, or maybe it was a little later, I think it was the second run, I can't remember, but I remember having Mario, and back in those days, it was around 2019-ish, 2020, Auto Fool was the new hotness, right? It, Auto Fool was just released, or very recently released, and like everyone just ran Auto Fool for the convenience that it provided, like it was so popular. I'm sure, you know, people, if, if you think about it, it's like, how Maru Tifa, you had Rao, right? Rao Nidok system. I remember Minaka came out in that rerun and people were just waiting. When's the first blue auto Fula? And I was like, it's gonna be Kaiba. It's gonna be Kaiba. We're getting Yu-Gi-Oh collab, right? And Kaiba was it. But at the same time, it wasn't it because Kaiba, like he had that 80% HP conditional. He doesn't have that anymore, but he used to have it. And people were like, yeah, this, this is just trash. So <laughs> kind of died out. But yeah, back in those days, all about auto -flow, right and so Rao super popular man this is a north star winner i think that's a dead cola now Rao and then how maru tifa that was big so i think around those days we have power rangers too right and so mario back in those days was 12 turn cooldown and it didn't have the shield so it's a four turn just heal over time right much like Kuro yuri but you needed three marios right but mario had much better stats and awakening so it kind of was okay right and so i was thinking back in those days aa3 was the end game i'm like what if i just became a degenerate and <laughs> 
I ran Haomaru, which was the light Autofua back in the day, and then I paired with Megazord. Because keep in mind that even though Autofua was the hotness, like you still needed combos, right? Because it was Blob Autofua. Oh yeah, Ina Phenom was the dark one. Yeah, that was the big one back then, right? Anyway, because it was all Blob Autofua, you still needed extra combo, right? So a lot of teams, you know, Phenom provided plus one combos. What did Raul? I think you could run it with Lina Inverse. I forget what Raul paired with, but there was something. And then, of course, other than that, you could run 7x6. So you saw a lot of Halmar Tifa just crushing AA3 back in the day. And I mean, <laughs> the thing was in Power Rangers, there was a unit called Megazord, right? And Megazord was like plus one, I think it was plus one CC or was it plus two? But you had extra combos off Light Blob for Megazord. And so I was like, oh my God, what if I just played Haomaru and Megazord and then I run three Marios <laughs> just for that healing, right? So I didn't have to worry about healing at all. I just power through with the orbs I had and just go, go, go. And because it's like, I'm healing through everything. Like even if I take damage, I'll just heal through it. You know, it's just face tank meta, right? So it's cool for me because I like had these thoughts about Mario. It's like how I could use her, but it ended up just not being feasible. So I shelved her. And then now for her to come back and be actually viable and good is really, really cool to me, right? Like, you know, it took what, two years? Yeah, two years, two years. We've come full circle. So Mario is now only requires two copies to loop right and also provides a shield which is huge because well it's tank meta now right you gotta tank everything so of course you have the marios and marios just good damage good skill boost just great package right then you have elmina elmina is the unmatchable clearer here i was a bit worried because nine turns is a bit slow but it's like you only have to worry about light and you generate so many orbs usually you're okay with that kind of cooldown if anything you use elmina more for the full board as well but yeah Elmina was, you know, just good, right? Good, good value. Uh, lots of damage as well. Has the heal TPAs, which is quite nice. Heal TP, definitely another way. Like, you know, Sephira, what's funny enough is Sephira has a recovery multiplier, right? That like matches with her HP multiplier. So it's not like I'm hurting for recovery, but for some reason, I just load myself recovery on this team and it ends up working out because, you know, you have the heal over time. You have that auto healing from Mario, which is really nice because I don't have to think about healing, right? Like I don't have to think about matching a heal combo, right? And I'll just heal through it. But then Ilmina is there and she gives me an extra option to just heal, right? Like I can heal through stuff. I just need to, you know, match the heal TPA in case my HP goes dangerously low. So that's also another great benefit there too. So, you know, it's something really nice. And then of course, damage is damage. And I have to admit the sub attribute kind of part is really nice. Unfortunately, Safira just doesn't get to the ridiculous damage heights of like Daytona, right? Where Daytona just caps both main and sub attribute. Safira just doesn't do that much damage. Again, it's just another part of VDP's efficiency or inefficiency as a damage awakening. So. It is what it is. There's not much to complain about. That's just how Sephira is. And then of course the last sub here is Kyo. And Kyo is, well, I have to admit, I was pretty happy to use Kyo because I have never used them before, ever. I've had like six of them forever, right? It's like million copies of them. And I've never touched Kyo once. I've used Celica, I've used Ina, I've used Kyori, I've used Akai. I've never used Kyo ever until today. And so it was really cool because I'm like, oh my God, I finally get, because it's like, I've always like, sometimes I just look through my box, right? I'm like, oh cool, I have this. I didn't even know. And you know, one of those cards is always Kyo. It's like, oh my God, Kyo exists, but I just never need to use him where he's just bad. And now he's like actually okay, right? And keep in mind, like Kyo, he has that dragon killer. That dragon killer is mad stonks. Like it's so insane because keep in mind, dragon killer is insane for like the tanky songs like Richa, Indra, Orochi. You got the bosses, the Mirus, right? It's like dragon killer is like the best killer in this dungeon. So for Kyo to have that as well is absolutely insane. And then on top of that, it's like, well, Kyo's just three VDP and lots of SP as well. So it's just a great package and he has a really short awakening so I can inherit over him and the unlock and the time extend is very convenient. Although I don't use them where I would like to use them, but it is what it is. 
I mean, sometimes, you know, things don't work out that conveniently. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just really cool, like, for me to see him being used, right? Because there's a lot of stuff I, in my box I don't use, right? And so it's like, I just felt like Kilo, at some point, I just gave up on him, right? It's like, you're going to be irrelevant for the rest of your the rest of your existence but turns out i was happily wrong and so he gets used today okay so in terms of equips this team i stacked hp so hard that it's pretty tanky in the early game so i actually inherit delay on one of my marials and then on the other marial i have like a random active i think it was just for the awakenings right team hp and blind res right because blinds are really really annoying right so that's what i use that for and then on elmina i have another delay equip i have gojo right originally it was supposed to be for blind but because i inherited my fujin on kyo i couldn't use his active to deal with like the earlier part on floor two where you get the time debuff and the recovery debuff like I couldn't deal with any of that. So having Gojo and just delaying that floor and to stall out the debuffs, that was, you know, it, it ended up being the right play. So it worked out for me. That was really nice. Of course, Gojo also opened up more flexibility in terms of equips, right? Because I used to use New Year Lejoa equip on one of my Sephiros, and now I just use Inosuke instead. Right? And of course, like an equip like Amash would be better, but you don't need that much HP. So open up more flexibility. And then on Kyo, I have the Divine Dog Totality equip. It's the Fujin. It also has like the spinner counter, right? And it's very important because I actually use the spinner latent here. What's very frustrating about this dungeon is that when you have spinners, it's really hard to match boxes. And when you combine those spinners in conjunction with combo shields, it becomes virtually impossible. And so the biggest challenge I faced early on the early floors was Chester, right? Because Chester, he makes your board big, but then he gives you spinners makes your board smaller and the spinners really killed me right so i was like yeah i can't really break this 9c shield so i ended up just you know running the spinner latent to get rid of that and it helps for other spinners as well i can't remember off the top of my head it definitely helps on a, some other stuff as well so yeah that's kind of the team the last Sephiroth assist is vegan right and i'm sure you can see this on the pdc but i'm, I'm just going over it because it's like i don't remember what's what you know it's for me okay it's not for you i gotta remember what i put on my own team <laughs> So yeah, damage wise, if I match 10c VDP, both Mario's and Ilmina double cap, Kyo like hits about around 800 million to 1.2 billion, right? It, it's somewhere around that range, right? Uh, Sephira is both cap. Yeah. Oh, something to note is besides the fact that you can match dark orbs, like six link dark orbs to save yourself in case you're in a pinch, right? Sephira has combo orbs, right? And so it feels really counterintuitive at first because it's like, why would I need combo orb? I'm matching VDP every turn and VDP is nine orbs and combo orb is 10 to 12, right? The reasoning behind that and why I think it's so cool is that sometimes you just don't want to match VDP or sometimes, I don't know, you just can't match VDP, right? And so in those cases, having the combo orbs really helps you out because like the extra combos sometimes get you over the hump over certain combo shields that are really high. There's a lot of combo shields in this dungeon, like surprisingly so. And so without combo orbs, some of them would have been brutal, right? Again, I go back to Chester, right? Chester is like, he puts up his 9C shield, right? So what I do is I try to combo orb when I get rid of the spinners. That way, when I try to VDP kill, I don't have to worry about getting my damage absorbed in case I don't hit enough combos. I guess thinking about like problems with this team, I guess the other most difficult spawn besides Chester was green wee jazz he was a tough nut to think about until i realized because it's like i tried to one shot him but he's like literally just out of one shot range like he's at that sweet spot range where if you hit him as hard as you can you know he will execute you right back right and you know executes aren't fun so I figured I, eventually I just figured it out. It's like, okay, you stall out the three turns and then you just combo orb, right? Because it gives you some damage, right? And it gets you below his 99% kind of kill move thing or rather 100% HP kill move and then you need to deal damage that way instead of getting executed you actually manage to kill him right so yeah you just chip him down after stalling and then you just kill him with a VDP done deal after we jazz of course you have Paimon Paimon is 
auto loss so nothing much you can do there unfortunately you just lose so yeah i hopefully i can make something of that change right like i can change something about that but for now it's an auto loss uh, as it stands blue middle okay technically speaking uh if you run into blue middle you should be able to kill her within like the seven eight turns you're given the problem is is that when you're popping mario if you get trolled with less than six really you want seven green orbs but if you get trolled with less than six it's like you're you're pretty screwed you're just doomed right it's like what are you gonna do <laughs> it's like deal no damage on a boss you need to out damage before it kills you yeah it, it's i found that out because i saved mario thinking it was my kill board and i got like four wood orbs and i was just like oh my god the thing about mario board is that remember mario generates fire water wood light right and Saphira converts fire and water to light so it's literally just three fourths light one fourth wood and if you get shafted on the wood you just end up doing nothing with that board which sucks right so my opinion about that is that you want to pop mario as early as possible you're given let's see one two three four five six seven eight you're given eight turns i think to kill her yeah i think you're given like eight turns to kill but pop it on like the third turn or fourth turn and pray that you get a good board because if you don't you're screwed so yeah it, it's just rough i have to admit i lost because of that i i just was so sad because i haven't even beaten blue mute with two it's it's not because i can't right it's just once i have a game plan for it i just don't run into blue mute right i just don't see it anymore right but then when i don't expect it it's like i get it and it's like oh i'm not ready i die or i get shafted by bad rng so it's like <sighs> you just take the you know, sometimes it's just rough you know you get you get rough luck other than that team runs pretty smooth it's a very tanky very you know just box and go team so i like it it's pretty cool i think there's a lot of unique features about Zafira, even though it might not like feel that great or it might not feel like that unique per se it's still i think it's still very good so i like it and yeah i don't know it's cool that we got an md2 capable lead i like it i know that people are hyped because you can also pair with saitama if we eventually get one punch man collab but yeah i think it's cool got an md2 ready lead which we do have a good you know stable of we got all boats right not i i don't know if nautilus can clear maybe with buffs i don't know it's still very rough on like planar so yeah it, i don't know i mean i don't i'm I'm not gonna try Nautilus, so I don't really care. But yeah, Royal Oak, Sea Wolf, Daytona, you have Mikage, and now you have Saphira. So, pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoyed. I had a blast. I, it's pretty cool. Definitely some, you know, growing pains, kind of thinking about what goes where and how to play it. The fact that you can VDP everything is really nice because you don't have to worry. Like, you know, playing Daytona, you have to worry about every VDP shield, right? Because Daytona deals too much damage and it gets voided and blah, 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 right? But with Saphira, it's like i don't care if i do too much damage i'll puncture through all your void shields so i don't really care that's so kind of a different pace right it, it definitely feels it runs different right it's like you, you think about it this way right you're driving a car you have your own car right and you get into an accident so you have to get a rental car now you you still it's nice that you still have a car to work with right but at the same time that rental car it just feels different right you know it does the same things you need it to do but it runs different and that's kind of how I feel about Daytona and Safira. It's like, I ran it with Daytona. I know how it feels like with Daytona. And with Safira, it's, I'm running through the same things and I can do the same things, but it just feels different. So that's how I feel about it. I don't know how you guys think about it. If you have Safira, you know, let me know how, what you think about the card. I, I like it. It's pretty cool. If you don't have Safira, you know, let me know what you think, whether she, she's worth the hype, if you think she's good or if you think she's overrated. Anyway, that'll be all for me. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, good luck and have fun.